Welcome to the AASM Clinical Practice Guideline webinar series. This webinar will review the 2018 AASM Clinical Practice Guideline on the use of actigraphy for the evaluation of sleep and circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorders. During this webinar, we will review a brief background on the subject, the methodology employed in the review, and the clinical practice recommendations. Actigraphy is a procedure that records and integrates the occurrence and degree of limb movement activity over time. Actigraphic devices can be worn on the wrist, ankle, or waist, relatively unobtrusively over a period of days to weeks. For sleep applications, the devices are typically worn on the wrist or ankle. Mathematical algorithms are then applied to these data to estimate wakefulness and sleep. In addition to providing a graphical summary of wakefulness and sleep patterns over time, actigraphy generates estimates of certain sleep parameters that are also commonly estimated by using sleep logs or measured directly by polysomnography. The AASM commissioned a task force of sleep medicine clinicians with expertise in the use of actigraphy for the evaluation of sleep and circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorders. The task force conducted a systematic review to compare actigraphy to both sleep logs and PSG. The objective was to determine whether actigraphy provides information that is distinct from patient reported data and consistent enough with the results of PSG to use as an objective measure. The review and guideline focused exclusively on clinical grade devices approved by the FDA as an actigraphy device or equivalent device that uses an accelerometer to measure limb activity associated with movement during sleep for physiologic applications. The review did not cover consumer wearable devices or other non-prescription devices directly marketed to consumers. Clinical questions were developed that identified the sleep and circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorders of interest. Based on their expertise, the task force developed a list of patient-oriented, clinically relevant outcomes that are indicative of whether actigraphy can be used as an objective measurement tool. A systematic review of the scientific literature was performed to identify articles that addressed at least one of these clinical questions. Meta-analysis was performed on outcomes of interest when possible. Clinical significance thresholds were used to determine if a change in an outcome was clinically significant. These thresholds were defined for each outcome prior to statistical analysis. The task force then used the GRADE system to assess the evidence and determine their certainty that the scientific literature was reflective of what the average patient would experience, referred to as quality of evidence in the guideline. Next, the task force considered the balance of beneficial and harmful effects of actigraphy and the patient values and preferences associated with using actigraphy. Based on these criteria, clinical practice recommendations were developed and assigned a strength of recommendation. The strength of a given recommendation was designated into one of two categories, strong and conditional. A strong recommendation implies that almost all patients should receive the recommended course of action. Such recommendations could be used as a quality criterion or performance indicator. A conditional recommendation indicates that most patients should receive the suggested course of action. However, different choices may be appropriate for different patients. The clinician must help each patient determine if the suggested course of action is clinically appropriate and consistent with his or her values and preferences. Ultimately, Judgment regarding any specific care must be made by the treating clinician and the patient, taking into consideration the individual circumstances of the patient, available treatment options, and resources. Recommendation 1. We suggest that clinicians use actigraphy to estimate sleep parameters in adult patients with insomnia disorder. This is a conditional recommendation. This recommendation was accompanied by the following remark. Objective monitoring is not required for the routine diagnosis of insomnia. However, it is useful in differential diagnosis and when objective estimates of sleep parameters are important to clinical decision-making. For example, non-response to cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, 
patient requests increased hypnotic dose, or patient reporting is of questionable validity. This recommendation is based on 46 studies that provided data suitable for meta-analyses. The overall quality of evidence was moderate due to imprecision. Meta-analyses demonstrated that actigraphy provides objective sleep latency and total sleep time data that is both consistent with PSG and unique from patient-reported data. Potential benefits of actigraphy include convenience, relatively low patient burden, longitudinal assessment capability, and relatively low cost. Therefore, the task force concluded that the benefits of actigraphy outweigh the potential harms and that most patients would use actigraphy if longitudinal objective measurement of sleep is needed. Based on their clinical experience, the task force concluded actigraphy may be more feasible and cost-effective than PSG in obtaining objective measurement of sleep parameters, particularly if longitudinal objective measurement of sleep is needed. Recommendation 2. We suggest that clinicians use actigraphy in the assessment of pediatric patients with insomnia disorder. This is a conditional recommendation. This recommendation was accompanied by the following remark. Though pertaining to the general pediatric population, this recommendation also includes pediatric patients with developmental disorders based on one study that included patients with autism and suspected insomnia. Studies reviewed included young children and adolescents, ranging in age from 3 to 19 years old. This recommendation is based on six studies, including one study of nonspecific sleep disorders in children with autism. The overall quality of evidence was moderate due to imprecision and small sample size. These studies demonstrated that actigraphy reports total sleep time and wake-after-sleep onset data that is unique from patient-reported data. These data suggest that actigraphy may be more sensitive in identifying sleep maintenance problems and reduced sleep duration in pediatric patients with insomnia. Potential benefits of actigraphy include reduced caregiver burden, increased feasibility of prolonged monitoring, and increased sensitivity over sleep logs in identifying short sleep duration and increased wake-after-sleep onset. The task force determined that the benefits of actigraphy outweigh the potential harms and that the vast majority of patients would use actigraphy. Recommendation 3. We suggest that clinicians use actigraphy in the assessment of adult patients with circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorder. This is a conditional recommendation. This recommendation is based on two studies. The overall quality of evidence was very low due to imprecision and small sample size. The studies show that actigraphy is useful in the assessment of sleep onset and offset times and in the evaluation of treatment outcomes in some patients with circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorders. The potential benefit of actigraphy includes lower patient burden relative to sleep logs. The task force determined that the potential benefits of objective measurement of sleep onset and offset outweigh the potential harms, which are minimal. The task force also determined that the majority of patients would use actigraphy for the evaluation and treatment of circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorders. Recommendation 4. We suggest that clinicians use actigraphy in the assessment of pediatric patients with circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorder. This is a conditional recommendation. This recommendation was accompanied by the following remark. Though pertaining to the general pediatric population, this recommendation also includes patients with developmental delays based on two studies that included participants with autism and other developmental disorders. Studies reviewed included patients ranging in age from 2 to 21 years old. This recommendation is based on four studies including one study of nonspecific sleep disorders in children with autism. The overall quality of evidence was low due to imprecision in small sample sizes. These studies demonstrated that actigraphy reports total sleep time data that is unique from patient-reported data. One study also demonstrated that actigraphy reports sleep offset time that is unique from patient-reported data. Overall, these findings indicate 
that actigraphy can provide objective data that is consistent and unique from patient reported data. Potential benefits of actigraphy include reduced caregiver burden, increased feasibility of prolonged monitoring, increased sensitivity over logs in assessing reduced sleep duration and earlier sleep offset, and improved reliability compared to self-reported sleep parameters. The task force determined that the benefits of actigraphy outweigh the potential harms and that the vast majority of patients would use actigraphy. Recommendation 5. We suggest that clinicians use actigraphy integrated with home sleep apnea test devices to estimate total sleep time during recording in the absence of alternative objective measurements of total sleep time in adult patients suspected of sleep disordered breathing. This is a conditional recommendation. This recommendation was accompanied by the following remark. This recommendation only applies to patients who are appropriate candidates for a home sleep apnea test. This recommendation is based on six studies that provided indirect evidence. The overall quality of evidence was low due to imprecision, small sample size, and indirectness. Overall, these studies demonstrated slight improvement in the diagnostic accuracy of OSA with the use of integrated actigraphy to estimate total sleep time during a home sleep apnea test when compared with only using total time in bed or total recording time, particularly in cases of severe OSA. The benefits of using actigraphy integrated with a home sleep apnea test are a more accurate assessment of sleep disorder breathing for which there is negligible harm. Therefore, the task force determined that the benefits of actigraphy outweigh the potential harms and that patients would likely value the potentially more accurate assessment of sleep disordered breathing that could be obtained from use of actigraphy integrated with a home sleep apnea test. Recommendation 6. We suggest that clinicians use actigraphy to monitor total sleep time prior to testing with a multiple sleep latency test in adult and pediatric patients with suspected central disorders of hypersomnolence. This is a conditional recommendation. This recommendation was accompanied by the following remark. Actigraphy can be used for 7 to 14 days prior to the PSG and multiple sleep latency test to assure adequate sleep time leading up to the testing. Actigraphy can also be used to establish habitual sleep-wake timing. Actigraphy does not replace PSG prior to the MSLT. This recommendation is based on one study and is indirectly supported by the evidence supporting the other recommendations in this guideline. The overall quality of evidence was moderate due to imprecision and indirectness. This study demonstrated small differences in total sleep time recorded by actigraphy compared to PSG on the night before the MSLT. These data, in conjunction with supporting evidence from other sleep disorders, demonstrate that actigraphy provides objective data that are unique from patient-reported data. The task force determined that the potential benefits of using actigraphy are large and that the ability to confirm that the patient has sufficient sleep prior to an MSLT would result in improved diagnostic accuracy. This could also reduce the likelihood of misdiagnosis as well as unnecessary or inappropriate treatment. The task force determined that the benefits of actigraphy outweigh the potential harms and that the vast majority of patients would use actigraphy. Recommendation 7. We suggest that clinicians use actigraphy to estimate total sleep time in adult patients with suspected insufficient sleep syndrome. This is a conditional recommendation. This recommendation was accompanied by the following remark. The duration of recording is recommended to be two to three weeks or more, depending on the specific needs of the patient and the clinical issues. This recommendation is based on 11 studies. The overall quality of evidence was moderate due to imprecision, heterogeneity, and small sample sizes. These studies demonstrated large differences in total sleep time recorded by actigraphy compared to sleep logs, indicating that actigraphy provides objective data that may be useful in the assessment of the insufficient sleep.
the task force determined that the benefits of using actigraphy outweigh the harms and that the vast majority of patients would use actigraphy. Recommendation 8. We recommend that clinicians not use actigraphy in place of electromyography for the diagnosis of periodic limb movement disorder in adult and pediatric patients. This is a strong recommendation. This recommendation is based on five studies. The overall quality of evidence was moderate due to imprecision and small sample sizes. Across the studies, the periodic limb movements of sleep index measured by actigraphy differed significantly from EMG measures in both adult and pediatric populations, demonstrating that actigraphy does not produce reliable estimates of periodic limb movements. The task force determined that the potential for overestimating or underestimating limb movements could lead to potentially unnecessary treatment or to missed cases of periodic limb movement disorder. Therefore, the task force concluded that the potential harms of using actigraphy over EMG during PSG outweighed the benefits of ease of monitoring. Based on clinical expertise, the task force determined that the vast majority of patients would not use actigraphy for the diagnosis of periodic limb movement disorder. Wrist actigraphy was originally developed as a research-based method for estimating sleep parameters across multiple nights in the home sleep environment, rather than measuring sleep during a single night in the sleep laboratory environment. In the last 15 years, actigraphy has been viewed as a useful clinical tool particularly in the evaluation of patients with suspected or confirmed sleep disorders for whom understanding sleep-wake habits across multiple nights can inform clinical decision-making. However, it is important to recognize that actigraphy is not a substitute for in-laboratory PSG when there is an indication for in-laboratory testing. Finally, it should be noted that cost can influence patient preferences for actigraphy and must be considered when implementing these recommendations. Although many third-party payers currently reimburse for actigraphy as a clinical assessment tool, there is significant variability from region to region and payer to payer, thereby impacting its use. If this procedure were reimbursed by payers and the cost to patient were reduced, this may further increase patient preferences in favor of using actigraphy in clinical practice.